in a hypothesis test, we always have two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Remember the null hypothesis always contains a statement of equality and the alternative hypothesis always contains a statement of inequality with the less than, greater than, or not equal. It's essential to understand that in a hypothesis test, you always assume the null hypothesis is true. So if we were to say that mu equals 20, we're going to assume that mu equals 20 is true. Then what we do is we collect evidence, our sample data, and then we either reject HO, the null hypothesis, or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, remember that alpha represents the maximum allowable probability of the type one error of rejecting HO when HO is really true. That is like sending an innocent man to jail. We want that probability to be very small. We don't want to send an innocent person to jail. We don't want to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is really true. So typical values for alpha are 0.1, like 10%, 0.05 or 5%, and 0.01 or 1%. Okay, so the next, the second step that we that we do in hypothesis test, after you create your hypotheses, remember that it's going to come down to making a decision about the null hypothesis. Are we going to reject? the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Th that's the decision that we're going to make. So the second step after we form the hypotheses are to create our rejection regions. Okay, and it may not make sense right away what that means, but as we go through the content, hopefully it'll um, become a lot more clear. Okay, so rejection regions we, we essentially have three different types of hypothesis tests that we can perform. We have a left-tailed, right-tailed, and then at the bottom of the page, two-tailed. All, all that that's say, telling us is that the left-tailed test, when you look at the alternative hypothesis, it says mu is less than k. That tells us less than we're shading left. And what we're shading is the area of the rejection region for HO. What that area is, is alpha. So if alpha is 0 0.01, that means that we're shading 0 0.01 area to the on the left-hand tail of, of the uh, normal curve. Okay, so what that would look like is this. Okay, so we sketch a normal curve. We know that on the z-axis, the zero is right in the center. We know that with 1%, area to um, with a less than shading left we know that that's going to be on the left hand end here and whatever that alpha value is we know that there's a z score that we can find that goes with it so if we know that we have 0 0.01 area to the left we can find that z score that has 0 0.01 to its left by using our tables or our calculator, our inverse norm on the calculator. Okay, and we'll get to that later on. Okay, as far as on a sampling distribution, a sample means concept, we have the x bar axis, and, and we're assuming that mu is right in the center of that curve. Okay, with a right tail test, now we're looking at for the alternative is that mu is greater than k. And the reason I'm bringing up the alternative here when, when I say left-tailed or right-tailed is because mu equals k, the null hypothesis is always the same, meaning it always has an equals. The only thing that changes in your hypotheses other than the numbers are the inequalities. The inequality in the alternative hypothesis will tell you which way you're shading. So a greater than we're shading to the right. Well, again, what are we shading? We're shading alpha, which is the area of the rejection region. So again, that's gonna be a value like 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 or 0 0.1.
Okay, it's going to be some small value. So that diagram would look like this. So you see it's just the opposite idea of shading to the left. Okay, and I'll mention the z-score when you shade to the left, that's going to be a negative z-star value here. And this one will be a positive z-star because we're on the right-hand side of zero. Okay, and then for a two-tailed test, notice that the alternative hypothesis is a not equals. Well, not equals means that we could be on either side of mu equals k. All right, so what we do there is we shade both ends. Well, now the only difference is we have alpha over two because we have two tails to split that total area or probability of alpha. So you have to divide it by two. So for example, if alpha is 0.1 or 10%, you would divide that by two to get 0.05 or 5% in both tails. Okay, and then you're going to have the same z-score except one is positive and one is negative because of the symmetry of a normal curve. Okay, so again, what tells you which way you're shading, either on the left end, right end, or both ends, is the alternative hypothesis. Basically, the sign or the symbol in the alternative hypothesis tells you which way to shade. Okay, so let's put some numbers to this. Okay, so suppose you read a question and you come up with a null hypothesis that mu equals 42. And we have no context to this, so it doesn't matter if it's 42 uh, minutes, 42 inches, okay, whatever it is. You read the question and you get mu equals 42 for the null hypothesis. And also in the question, you read it and suppose that there's something about um, somebody claiming that the, the mean is uh, less than 42. Okay, so that, that's where the alternative hypothesis has a less than in it. <clears throat> okay, so if they tell us that alpha is 0 0.05, which way are we going to shade? We're going to set up our rejection region. So we draw our normal curve and a less than, remember, means that we're shading to the left. So we're going to create a normal curve and we're going to put 0 0.05 in the left-hand end, and that's the area. Okay, now we can find the z-score that goes with that alpha value. And the few ways that we can do that, one way is the inverse norm on the calculator. Okay, and remember, I'll just show you real quick. That's from doing second vars, and then inverse norm, and then you put the area to the left which in this case is 0 0.05, and that gives you negative 1.6448, which rounds to negative 1.645. Now the reason I'm using the three decimals in this one is because I did it by, by using the Z table. And if you look up 0 0.05 area to the left, okay, notice that it's exactly halfway between these two areas, 0495 and 0505. Okay, it's exactly halfway between those. So you average negative 1.64 and negative 1.65 to get negative 1.645. Okay, so that's why I use that. If you said negative 1.65, I would accept that because you ground it on your calculator. Okay, now the idea here is when we create an SDSM, our sampling distribution of sample means, we have an X bar axis rather than Z, and we're assuming that mu equals 42. Our null hypothesis that mu equals 42, that is the assumption that we're making. Okay, on the next one, the alternative hypothesis says that mu is greater than 194. So now we think about the greater than means we're shading to the right. And everything else is a similar idea. Okay, the only difference on this one is notice with the inverse norm, 
I put in 0.99 rather than 0.01 because we know we're shading to the right end here. So there's 0.99 area to the left. Your inverse norm and your tables, your Z tables, will, will show you the cumulative area to the left of the Z score. Okay, so that Z, Z star value is 2.33. So on our X bar axis, we're assuming that the population mean is 194 because that is our null hypothesis. Okay, and the next one, the alternative hypothesis is a not equals. So that means that we're shading on both ends. Divide alpha by two because we have to split that into both ends, so 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025 and when you do the inverse norm on that you get negative 1.96 and because of the symmetry we know that positive 1.96 is the other data value for z. I'm sorry not the data value is the other z-score. We're assuming that the population mean was 14.7 because that's what the null hypothesis told us. Okay, and then just the last couple here, I'll show you the answers. You can pause the video, but I just want to keep moving here. Okay, and number four, again, less than means we're shading to the left. So that has a Z star value of negative 1.28. And then the last one has a not equal to, so we're dividing it into two tails. And a lot of people miss this. When you do 0 0.01 divided by two, you get 0 0.005 area. Okay, and that's where you get, um, and the inverse norm, you get negative 2.576. If you looked it up in your tables, I use negative 2.575 because we're exactly halfway between these two. And when you average negative 2.5, 7 and negative 2.58, you get negative 2.575. Okay, but if you use the value your calculator gives you, the, the 2.576, that's perfectly fine. Okay, and the last thing I'll mention before I go on, it, it, it's probably confusing, okay, why are we making these rejection regions? Well, remember, it all comes back to the idea that we form this null hypothesis and we're assuming that it's true. In the end, we're going to either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject. So what we need to what we need to find here is we need to create, well, when are we going to reject the null hypothesis? And these rejection regions are telling us when we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to collect evidence so we collect our sample data. Now just kind of forecasting ahead here, let's just suppose we're looking at this, this example here, number four. Let's suppose we collect our sample data and we end up with a sample mean of, uh, let's say, um, 35. Well, we're assuming that the population mean was 39, so 35 is gonna be somewhere down here to the left. Okay, so the question is, is that sample mean of 35, is that in the rejection region? Okay, and that, and that is where we're going to be able to turn our 35 X bar value. So we're gonna turn X bar into a Z score and then compare it to the Z score that we got with the alpha. And if, if our Z score is more extreme, so in this case, to the left of negative 1.28, then we're going to say that we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that's gonna be the basic idea behind um, creating these rejection regions and using them. And if it doesn't make sense right now, that's okay, because we're gonna go through examples of it in other videos.